Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, now that we've got the plane on the wheels, uh, at least uh, for the moment, it's uh, a little bit easier to move the fuselage around and create a little bit more room to um, get some other projects that I've needed to get done out of the way. And uh, as some of you who have been following along uh, may remember, the uh, hinge bracket that is just on the far left-hand side of that uh, wing closest to the bottom of the screen there um, was labeled incorrectly and uh, I managed to install that in the wing uh, so it would not line up or the the flap and ailer, flaps and aileron on the this wing would not line up because it was off about a half an inch and there was just no way to correct it without removing uh, some skin here and uh, replacing that uh, that hinge point so um, you know I've had the part for quite a while and um, decided that uh, now is that I want to get this I want to get the wings all taken care of so it's time to get that taken care of um, spend an evening working on uh, removing a whole bunch of rivets and uh, um, it actually went a lot quicker than I expected to and those are that's just a quick floor plan or plan there if you see the red arrows um, that's the hinge that I'm working on there um, once you get it apart then you take out the uh, the rivets that are holding it in and uh, then put the new rivets back in and uh, trying to do all that without having to actually go farther than just that piece of skin and that actually worked out really well um, it wasn't horribly difficult and um, you know I also did just another quick inspection of everything that was inside the fuselage make sure I didn't hit any wires or anything like that and then uh, reverse the process um, Oddly enough, I don't think it took me more than two and a half, maybe three days at most to be able to complete the entire project. Um, I really wanted to get this done because, uh, um, you know, it's just, it's to be able to say the wings are done and complete and put them on the rack and uh, then, you know, my wife can actually, well, my wife's actually planning on doing the backfilling of the, uh, the rivets themselves because uh, that still needs to get done. So the only downside when, uh, um, with the spacing issue is uh, you'll see here in a minute that uh, when it does start raining, I can't have the, the nose of the, the, the fuselage there sticking out into the, the alley, which at that point in time, it just starts collecting the rain. That's me moving it back into the garage to not collect the rain. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, and you know, just, this is just a simple process of going back through, clicking it back together, making sure that it all lines up. Um, you know, there was a few little holes that I had to clean up that rivets either didn't clear correctly or just needed a little extra, uh, attention to, um, once that was done, um, then it was just a matter of clicking it all together. Um, I was, you know, double check the plans once in a while and make sure that I was doing the right, right rivets and the right holes and whatnot. I mean, uh, it fortunately it was just one side, so there wasn't a lot of extra work to do with that. Of course, once that's done, then the, the next part is to get the wing tip on, which the nice part about that was is that all the holes, uh, all the rivet holes for the, the wing tip were already pre-drilled or drilled at this point in time because I had to remove the wing tip to uh, get to this phase of things. Um, so uh, just spending some time getting this together. Um, I, you know, on some levels, I really kind of miss this phase of the build because uh, everything, once the wings are done here, everything from here on out is going to be inside the airplane, which is going to be a lot of getting in and out of, and, um, a lot more detail oriented work. Uh, not that the wings are not detail oriented, but, um, you know, it really genuinely looks like you're getting something done when you're building a wing or any control surface for that matter, because you can complete it and hold it up and be like, I've built this or I've assembled this. Um, the the fuselage can sit in one spot for weeks at a time even though i'm working on it in the evenings and the weekends but it just doesn't move so uh, i'm sure the neighbors think that i'm uh, taking a vacation or something from the project um so i was waiting for a neighbor to come over and help me flip the wing over because i wanted to put it uh, as jerry's back over again um, I just wanted to flip it over into the right side up orientation for the wing tip just because uh, to me, it, it, it makes a little bit more sense to put it on that way. There's not really a right or wrong, but um, at least this way it's making sense to me. 
Um, of course, I got to rewire the uh, wingtip light, uh, and uh, that's the part that uh, I'm putting on there. And um, you know, it was all ready to go. It just all I had to do is uh, clean up the the wire tips and resolder them back together, and um, then uh, I put a little bit of uh, I think it was yeah Cicaflex on the uh, the wingtip portion of things to kind of give it a little bit of a sealant between the skin and the wingtip itself and uh, again the holes were already drilled from the previous installation and uh, that made the final assembly pretty pretty straightforward um, it's been so long since I've had the Cicaflex out that uh, the like any good gun with caulk in it that uh, the, the tip had kind of dried out and so I had to get that cleared so that I could um, apply the pro seal and of course you know shortly before I uh, or shortly after I applied the pro seal I had a neighbor stop by and uh, it's like you got to move with with purpose when when there's uh, drying time involved so uh, just let them know that hey I'm I'm putting this together and uh, you can stand and talk I'll, I'll listen and talk but uh, I got to focus on this um, and it's also the other thing is is really amazing is how much light <laughs> at night or during the daytime actually bleeds into the garage um, when it gets dark outside that corner of the garage just I, I had to go grab another shop light and hang it up so that I could see what I'm doing um, so it, it, it I've, I've got quite a little quite a lot of light spilling out of the garage in the evening when it's nice out um, so anyway um, but yeah now I've got all that back together and uh, the the lamps on or the the position lights on the wingtip and the wingtips on so next thing to do is to get the well clean up I mean uh, it, it's like you make a mess and you clean it up you make a mess and clean it up but now that I've got it flipped over um, I can finish the other phase that I wasn't able to complete when I discovered that the hinge was incorrect was to uh, get the flap and ailerons aligned um, for those of you that haven't built this yet or, or are thinking of build it, about building it you build the flaps and the ailerons to a certain point without putting one row of rivets in and uh, this phase here you basically put the the flap and aileron onto the wing uh, using the bolts that they provide and then you uh, the way I did it was I took a, a, a piece of line a rope uh, or twine and ran it from the wing tip to the root of the wing and just made it nice and taut and then that gives me a straight line that the flap and aileron needs to follow for proper alignment. And um, then you lower the flap or aileron down, you put one rivet in, you bring it back up, make sure that it's locked into place. And then you lower it down, you put another couple of rivets in, and there's a pattern to it. Um, the nice part was is that the pattern was already done, so all I'd do was just put it together. Um, and it, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, the the true test will be when I get ready to go fly it. At uh, you know, at this point, uh, I'm very comfortable with where those are at. So obviously, the next phase here is uh, um, getting the the fuel tanks on. And uh, for those of you who are following along early, um, the fuel tanks are just that's another fiddly thing that um, takes a lot of time and effort to be able to get them right and get them sealed because uh, even one leak obviously is fuel you can't have it leaking out all over the place so the idea is you know we'll pop these wing tips on and uh, or I'm sorry the fuel tanks on and uh, we'll be good to go um, I'm having a little bit of a problem with the uh, the, the tanks going on um, and it really felt like I was bumping up against the um, uh, the the the, the, the spar itself um, because it, it, it was like it would not quite go on all the way. And this is, I, I needed a better angle uh, to work on it with, so I crawled up onto the bench and laid underneath to try to get a better angle on it rather than flipping it back and forth, because every time I do that, I need uh, a neighbor to come over and help me do that. Uh, the wings are getting, it's getting kind of heavy, and uh, my wife uh, just isn't strong enough to be able to lift and twist and all that. But she was out helping me uh, troubleshoot this problem, and... Um, uh, just couldn't quite figure it out. I was thinking that what was going on was the angle brackets that um, sort of guide the uh, fuel tank into position. It's, 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 I think it's a structural thing as part of holding the tanks in, in position once they're bolted on or riveted on. Um, I felt like they were hitting the 
um, the main spar there. And I couldn't, you know, what the problem is, is it's like, how do you see behind the wing when it's on, in position? So I was really sort of struggling with trying to figure out how to identify where the problem was. Um, I thought about it overnight and came out the next day and uh, I've got one of those uh, cameras that you can snake around um, and it just works off the camera so you can see my phone in front of the duct tape and it gives me a picture of the positions. So we were checking each position as we went through trying to attach the fuel tank and uh, just verifying that there was clearance at each point. And the way I was doing it, you, in the moments there, you can see the yellow uh, line running along the spar. Um, that's the camera itself that is uh, that we're just basically taping into position where each of those angle brackets are at to making sure that it was guiding. And I was coming in from the, the root of the wing itself, so it wasn't interfering with the wing. Um, but no matter what we tried, uh, each time we put it on, it just it wouldn't line up. Um, so, um, you know, we kind of think about it for a little bit and um, try to figure out what, what steps we did wrong or, you know, maybe there was just a, something that wasn't, a, you know, clicking into place to allow for the wing to go in. <clears throat> um, it kind of felt like I just need to put a little bit more uh, pressure onto it, but the, the problem is uh, you can't push on the wing real hard because it'll push it off the bench. Um, and so, you know, some, just some more conversation around it to try to sort it out. Um, this is probably the worst idea, but, uh, it was super careful when I did this. I just put a, a tie strap on it and I kept a really close eye on everything. And, uh, I don't think, I mean, it didn't help. I mean, it didn't, and it didn't hurt and it didn't hurt anything in the process, but, um, I, at that point in time, I realized, okay, look, I'm just not going to get anywhere with this. I started reaching out to some folks to get some ideas as to what was going on. Um, there were some good suggestions, uh, but uh, I thought, well, you know, maybe one more thing I'm going to try here. And um, uh, rather than trying to push horizontally, I'll push vertically. Um, so I've got the, the jig that uh, the fuel tank rests in and uh, set it on the bench like this to, you know, have an even downward force to it. Um, we had hands on it, so it wasn't going anywhere but uh, this still was not letting us line up. So, um, you know, not really sure what, what to do at this point in time. <laughs>